guys, Tyler from Tab Master here again, and today we're going to talk about water savings in the home. Um, this is something that is becoming more and more necessary in a lot of places, particularly as you know droughts become more commonplace uh, and, and population densities increase, particularly in the American Southwest, but also you know all over the world. So there are a couple of key places where you can save water in the home. Um, according to the Environmental Protection Agency, about 19% of the water use in a home is at a faucet. Uh, there's a couple of ways that you can start saving water at faucets. And of course, we use our faucets for cooking, for, for cleaning, uh, for brushing our teeth, for washing our hands, for washing our face, things like that. So the, the, there's a couple of really you know, key ways that we can start reducing water uh, usage at faucet. The first way is to um, you know, literally use the faucet less. Uh, quite often, you know, when we're brushing our teeth or washing our hands, we'll leave the water running while we're washing our hands. You know, you've got the water running like this, you wash your hands, soap off, lather up, you know, rinse them off, and then turn the water off. And, you know, that amount of water wasted is significant because it keeps running when there's no real need for it to keep running. So one way you can do that is, you know, in short bursts. And you can do this by turning the handle on and off, or you can use a hands-free system like a sensor faucet or tap master. You can go in there, wash your hands, lather up, and then rinse, done. So instead of leaving that water running the whole time, you just use it when you need it. Same thing when brushing your teeth, instead of turning the you know, faucet on, letting the water run while you're brushing your teeth, you know, just run the faucet to get your tooth for toothbrush wet, get the toothbrush or the toothpaste lathered up, brush your teeth, and then rinse it off with the appropriate amount of water rather than leaving it running the whole time. Um, another thing that you can do is if you're washing your face with your wash basin, it might be beneficial to close the, uh, the drain in the wash basin you know, fill it up a little bit and then use that water to wash your face and then drain it down rather than leaving that water running continually while you're washing your face. Um, the second way that you can reduce water at the faucet is by in installing a low flow uh, faucet or aerator. And what that does is it replaces the aerator or, or faucet head with uh, a system that restricts the flow to a certain amount uh, of gallons per minute. Um, you know, like half a gallon per minute, 0.75 gallons per minute. And what that does is it just prevents the water from running at such a high rate as to waste more water. Uh, and obviously the best way to save water at the faucet is by combining all of these different, you know, situations where, you know, you reduce the amount that you're using the faucet and also using low flow faucets. And uh, low flow faucets really do help in that, you know, you only need water for a certain period of time not necessarily in a certain volume. So just having enough water to get your hands wet to wash your hands is, is plenty. I mean, it does make it a little bit longer to fill up a pot or fill up the sink when you're washing the dishes, but you know, it is definitely one way you can save water. Another way you can save water, um, particularly in the kitchen, is by using a dishwasher, believe it or not. Dishwashers tend to recirculate the water that they have in them rather than filling up uh, the whole dishwasher with water. They typically use a little bit less water than washing dishes by hand, particularly when you factor in the rinse cycle and, and rinsing your dishes afterwards. Um, another big point of water use in the house, um, and it's actually one of the largest points, I think it's about 25%, I could be, I could be wrong, I'll, I'll put a correction there if I'm you know, too far off, and that is the, the toilet. Um, so older toilets tend to use a significant amount of water per flush cycle. And there's a couple of ways that you can affordably reduce their water usage without um, having to replace the entire toilet. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take you actually to one of my toilets that I have done this to uh, and show you, you know, how that works and how that reduces the amount of water that's used. All right, guys, so this is a little bit awkward, but uh, you're with me uh, in my washroom right now. And what we can see here is this is an older toilet. Uh, I live in an older home, but we have converted this quite a while ago now to uh, lower flush operation and what that really entails if I can put this here without dropping the porcelain lid is there is this styrofoam insert that we've put in uh, to the toilet to reduce the total volume per flush um, it, this is a really affordable way to reduce um, uh, the total use per flush so instead of the entire volume of this tank being used in the flush it's just a smaller amount uh, it makes for a slightly less powerful flush, but it, it does reduce significantly the amount of water used um, every time you, you know, go.
go to the washroom. Uh, I've got a couple of ways that you can, uh, you know, reduce water use in the home is uh, at your shower. So the shower is another key place where a lot of water is used. Um, in there, the main way you reduce water is, you know, taking shorter showers, obviously, or installing, again, low flow shower heads. So shower heads, you know, you know, they can go down to two and a half gallons per minute, which is plenty for showering, especially if you have a shower head that's designed properly and actually gives you lots of pressure without that huge volume of water that was traditionally used uh, in the past. Um, I, I have them in my home. I don't have any issues with them. I find them quite useful. Uh, so a lot of people, you know, don't like them. It, it really is a personal preference. It depends on how much water you want to save. In some municipalities and, and jurisdictions, you are required to use low flow uh, shower heads, especially after a renovation or a new build. Um, so, you know, the shower is another place. And then finally, like another large area uh, where people um, use water without realizing it is, is through leaks. And these can be leaks you know, in your walls that you don't see, uh, which can be problematic. Or, you know, that dripping faucet that you haven't really thought of, you know, it, it drips a little bit, but it's not a big deal. You know, it doesn't really bother you that much. Overall, that can use a lot of water. And, you know, we want to prevent that. And it's, you know, it's basically just letting money and water flow down the drain. There's not really any reason to do it other than sometimes it's just inconvenient to fix. So, you know, if you've got a leaking faucet, just remember that that little drip does add up over time. Uh, toilets are, are a major issue when it comes to leaks uh, in residential and, and commercial locations. Uh, quite often that little flapper valve on the inside of your toilet bowl, or not toilet bowl, the toilet tank, um, does not quite seal properly and it allows a little bit of water to flow through. And, and what that does is it just continually runs water through your toilet and you're, you know, you'll notice that if your toilet, you'll, you know, the easiest way to determine if that's happening is if you hear your toilet run to fill the tank every once in a while uh, after, you know, a period of time that nobody's used that toilet. So just, you know, keep in mind that if your toilet is seemingly running to refill itself every once in a while, it's probably a leaky flapper valve and that's something you should probably just replace. They're really cheap, they're really easy to replace, there's not really any reason not to and it can save you a lot of money in water bills going forward. Um, and, uh, and finally, you know, like just, you know, watering uh, the grass sometimes, uh, you know, especially in areas where it's semi-arid. I live in Calgary, Alberta, Canada. Uh, it's a semi-arid environment, so we tend to have to water our lawns uh, quite a bit. Um, ways that you can, you know, reduce the amount of water usage uh, for external uh, applications is, you know, water your lawn um, first thing in the morning, you know, before the sun rises or just in the evening before the sun sets so that that water has a chance to soak into the ground um, before it gets burned off by the sun. Uh, if you're trying to, you know, water at high noon, then a lot of that water is going to be lost to evaporation uh, and not really go uh, to any benefit in your, in your lawn itself. Um, if you've got a, a rain reclamation system, if you live in a, a single family home and you can, you know, run your, your eaves drop and your gutters to uh, rain barrels, it's another great way to save water. Um, especially for if you want to use that for watering plants or watering your garden. Uh, it's, you know, just great ideas like that that go a long way to starting to, uh, you know, seriously reduce the amount of water that we're using uh, in our homes and our, um, uh, our businesses. Thank you again for watching. If you found this useful, you know, please share it with your friends, like, subscribe, leave a comment in the comment description. You can find us on Facebook and Twitter. Um, if you want to check, check out our website, it's www.timaster.ca. Uh, we make hands-free faucet control systems, but we're just advocates for, you know, really useful, usable, environmentally sustainable plumbing systems overall. So, you know, if there's some other really cool product that you, you know, you want us to have us look at, you know, so we can, you know, look at it and see how it, you know, fits in with the grand scheme of things, you know, please let us know. Again, thank you so much for, for watching me, and it's Tyler from Tapmaster, www.tapmaster.ca. Have a great evening, morning, evening night, whatever it is. Uh, I'm still not very good at these YouTube videos. I'm trying to get better, but uh, yeah, have a good day.